Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Usbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology faculty of medicine at Surah University. Let us try to discuss some MCQ in gynecology. Okay. Choose the one best response. Let us start with the first question. What is the usual order of appearance of the signs of normal puberty? A. Axillary hair, breast buds, pubic hair, and the menarche. B. Breast buds, axillary hair, pubic hair, and the menarche. C. Breast buds, pubic hair, axillary hair, and the menarche. D. Pubic hair, menarche, breast buds, and axillary hair. Okay. E. Pubic hair, breast buds, menarche, and axillary hair. So, so choose the one best response. Really, the first to develop is the breast. So breast buds starting first, followed by the pubic hair, then axillary hair, then menarche. So the right answer is. Number C, breast buds, pubic hair, axillary hair, and the menarche. This is the signs of normal puberty in order. Okay, let us go to the next. Which one of the following statements about endometriosis is true? Malignant changes are common. It is less common in women in their reproductive years than in postmenopausal women. Affected women may present with infertility. The most common site of involvement is rectovaginal septum. So choose the one first response. So which of the following is true as regard to endometriosis? Malignant changes are common. This is wrong. It is less common in women in reproductive years than in postmenopausal women. This is wrong because it is more common in reproductive age. Affected women may present with infertility. This is true. This is true. So this is the right answer. The, com the most common site of involvement is the rectovaginal septum is not true. Okay, so the right answer will be Affected women may present with infertility. Okay. Let's go to the next. An ovarian tumor has an increased likelihood of being malignant if examination reveals that it is mobile, bilateral, cystic, less than six centimeter in diameter. Of course, the signs of of malignancy one of the signs of malignancy is to be bilateral so the right answer is bilateral as you see here go to the next question congenital uterine anomalies are commonly associated with anomalies of which of the following digestive system Skeletal system, nervous system, urinary system, cardiovascular system. What is common as regard the yeah, anomaly system anomaly with uterine anomaly is urinary tract, urinary system. Okay, so the best one response here is urinary system. That's why if you found a case with uterine anomaly okay we should investigate for urinary tract by doing for example IVB to detect any urinary tract anomalies next question what is the treatment of choice for syphilis tetracycline doxycycline Restromycin penicillin. 
Of course, penicillin is the first choice. If there is allergy to penicillin, we can go to the alternate. So penicillin is the first choice for treatment of sepsis. Women infected with gonorrhea frequently have concurrent infection with which of the following? Herpes simplex virus, Chlamydia trachmatis, Trichomonas vaginalis, and the Haemophilus bicreae. Really, there is association between gonorrhea and the Chlamydia trachmatis. So, the best one response here will be Chlamydia infection. And that's why when we manage patient with gonorrhea, we give her treatment for chlamydia because of common association between both. Let us go to the next question. The grass of coarse hair in an androgen, in androgen dependent body regions is referred to as which of the following? Again, the growth of coarse hair in an andro in androgen dependent body region is referred to as which of the following? Masculinization, defeminization, androgenization, hirsutism. Of course, this abnormal hair is considered hirsutism. So the best one response will be hirsutism. Next, premature telarchy is associated with which of the following? Axillary hair development, isolated breast development, pubic hair development, voice changes, spontaneous ovulation. Again, Premature telarchy is associated with which of the following? Axillary hair development, isolated breast development, pubic hair development, voice changes, spontaneous ovulation. Of course, the right answer is, or the first one response here is, isolated breast development. This is the best one response. Next question, ovarian nucleus most commonly arise from which of the following? Ovarian epithelium, ovarian stroma, ovarian germ cells, ovarian sex school. The commonest is the ovarian epithelium, as we know. And the epithelial cell tumor is the commonest ovarian nucleus, malignant nucleus. Metastatic disease is another choice. So, the distractor include A, ovarian epithelium, B, ovarian stroma, C, ovarian germ cell, D, ovarian sex cord, E, metastatic disease. So, what you are going to choose? I'm going to choose ovarian epithelium because this is the common. So, the best one response here is ovarian epithelium. Go to the next question. Which one of the following nucleus may cause androgen excess? Non gestational choriocarcinoma, embryonal carcinoma, mixed germ cell tumor, granulosa cell tumor, gonadoblastoma. Again, which one of the following nucleus may cause androgen excess? Non gestational choriocarcinoma, or embryonal carcinoma, or mixed germ cell tumor or granulosa cell tumor or gonadoplastoma. The best one response here is gonadoplastoma. Yes. Next question, where do most cervical cancer arise? In the portion vaginalis, at the eternal os, at the endocervix, at the transformation zone. Of course, we know that the commonest site 
for cervical cancer is the transformation zone, which is the area between primary and the secondary squamoculumnar junction. So, transformation zone, the area between primary and secondary squamoculumnar junction is the best one response in this question. This is the last question. I remember you by my uh, three books on Amazon, textbook of obstetric, textbook of gynecology, and the contraception handbook. Thank you.